Yo, Brad, Tom, you won the giveaway from last week. Comic fam, enjoy your trending comics list. Another week, another list of the trending comics in the comic book marketplace. Tell your children not to walk my way. It is Mother's Day tomorrow, Russ. Yes, Tom, it is Mother's Day tomorrow, and happy Mother's Day to all you moms out there. You know what? First time I met Tom's mom, she was actually cosplaying as death from Sandman, and I knew I had a kindred spirit there. So anyway, happy Mother's Day, guys. Happy Mother's Day to my mom, comic mom, and don't forget to reach out to your family members. We have a list of the trending comics courtesy of the best comic app in in existence. We're chatting Key Collector Comics. The trending 10 is sourced from a larger list of 20. There's 10 other comics you gotta know, but let's jump right into this list at number 10. Hit the subscribe button, slap the like button. Stay tuned to the end of the video. We have a giveaway on deck and let's chat about Invincible Robert Kirkman Skybound Comics goodness. Number 10 on the list, Invincible number 16, the first appearance of Angstrom Levy. So $60 average sales with a high sale of $225 for a CGC 9.8 on this Robert Robert Kirkman leak that seemed a little bit more intentional than leakable. Well, we found out this past week that the success of Invincible Season 1 has propelled them to come back together for not just Season 2, but Season 3 on Amazon. It's fantastic. It's groundbreaking. It is amazing to think about where they're going to be taking us. So much story to be told from such an excellent superhero narrative. A 700% increase in copies sold this week because we got to see a video call between Robert Kirkman and Steven Yoon, who is the Academy Award nominated actor from the movie Minari, but also the voice of Invincible. Well, Kirkman mentioned that they've been extended for two more seasons and they're going to get to do some super cool things like exploring space and introducing characters like Angstrom Levy. Two more seasons. We're going to get to do all that stuff we talked about. We're going to be building Mark's character. We're going to be doing all, we're going to be going to space. There might be some Angstrom Levy. If I could spoil something. It's fun seeing Robert Kirkman chat with Steven Yeun on camera. I mean, we all know him from his fantastic time leading the movie Mayhem. I mm -hmm. love that horror film. Or his seven seasons as Glenn on The Walking Dead. I digress <laughs> because hearing that Angstrom Levy is coming is so fantastic. He's an antagonist that plays all throughout the narrative. He is a person who blames Invincible for his disfigured look. He has one of the worst fates of any character in the comic book run. Exciting to know that we are going to be getting years more of Invincible. Number nine on the list, a book that probably none of you have heard about, Walesville number one. This is another Another great book from Bad Idea. And as you know, because of Bad Idea, we don't have that many stores selling them. So the demand is very, very high. The supply is very, very low. Came out this week and it's selling solidly for $30. We have a narrative that takes place largely in the belly of a whale. A young boy getting swallowed up with the last thoughts being, well, my father, the whale hunter, is going to be going Moby Dick on this whale when he finds out that it ate his son. Mm. Well, he comes to find out that there there is this civilization that's inside the whale that's worth protecting. And now the narrative kind of flips on itself. This is what I love about comics, man. How bizarre they can get. And with writer Matt Kent attached, this right here is prime for people who are just looking to enjoy a beautiful story. Not to mention that it's told in mostly two-page spreads. It's 72 pages, square-bound, and beautiful looking. So for those of you that have been following Bad Idea, you know that ENIAC went to a not-first print. Well, because of the extra cost of this book, because it is square bound, it is 72 pages and much larger, it is very likely not going to go to a not first print, which may cause a lot of price spikes in the aftermarket. With Adam Polina on interiors, the comic fam is in for a treat. You know him from X-Force and he does stellar work. And Matt Hollingsworth, he's an Eisner award winning colorist. You know him from Hawkeye. This is one the comic fam needs to hunt for if you can find a copy. Now, let's take a look at some James Tynan goodness at number eight with WYND. $10 average sales with a $60 high sale of a CGC 9.8 for wind number one or WYND number one. Again, if you've got a book from James Tynion and we're having difficulty pronouncing his name properly, it makes total sense if we have a book that we're having difficulty pronouncing properly. And I'm James Tynion. We may have solved the mystery here today, comic fam, because James Tynion tweeted this out back in 2018. The local Gothamites pronounce it Tynion, but out of towners say Tiny Inn, and the Gothamites give them shit about it. Well, I'm glad we cleared that up. So a 310% increase in copies sold this week of this book that is very clearly influenced by Hayao Miyazaki. Now, we keep hearing 
Tynan talking about meetings that something may happen from this. And I also know that we have meetings and things that are supposed to be happening with something is killing the children. And that keeps getting talked about in his tiny onion newsletter, most likely why people are mispronouncing his name. It's a pleasure to hear that James Tynan has more work potentially being slated for the future for production. I want to remind the community that he didn't just come on the scene recently. He was a protege of Scott Snyder. Scott Snyder, who did New 52 Batman, it was his backup writer for those issues. He would call James his student of the art of the medium of comic books because Scott believed in him so much. It's amazing to see him on Batman today and to see how much he's shaken up the comic fam. James is new blood, he's a new guy, I have a lot of faith in him, man. He was my student before this. And in a fitting torch passing from Scott Snyder to James Tynan, we have number seven on the list, Batman number 108, the foil art germ one in 50 variant. $50 average sales and curious because the Federici variants were selling so much more aggressively than this one, although it made it on the list this week. All of these Batman variants are consistently selling. The Federici 1 in 25s are great. It's interesting to have a 1 in 50 that's foiled by Art Germ, but these are so popular. It's the first full appearance of Miracle Molly, and it's a new character that people are understanding has a little bit more fleshing out than Punchline did. Yeah, I was actually very pleased to see that we weren't getting another Punchline. Mm -hmm. On the contrary, this is a entirely different type of character. And not to mention that issue 108 surprised me in multiple ways. The connections to Future State wasn't expected. Bruce Wayne and dealing with the Unsanity Collective and whether or not they were bad for Gotham. Could they possibly be good for not just Gotham, but Batman? I have so many questions. I'm really all in on this narrative. Comic fam, you gotta keep up on your Batman and apparently your exclusives too. Comic fam, we have less than a week for you to sign up for the mystery mail call. It's the best way to support the show. And this month, every single person is gonna get an exclusive cover of Women of Marvel doing She-Hulk by Sabine Rich. Comic fam, not only do you wanna sign up this month and secure our May box, cause it's gonna be a banger, we also want to tell you that you should sign up so you can secure June's box because I'm going to announce the exclusive right here, right now, a week early. If you sign up for May, you are guaranteed a box in June and you're going to want to do that so you can guarantee your something is killing the children issue number 16 done by the God of War art director, Raph freaking Gersetti. This cover is brilliant. This is probably my favorite variant cover to date. Oh, yeah. And every box is getting a version of it. This variant has been many months in the making, and we are super excited to bring it to you in June. Now, make sure you go to Comic Tom 101 to sign up or click the link in the description down below. Thank you, Raph. And let's take a look at the next one on the list. We have at number six, Kanan, the last Padawan, issue number one, the first cameo appearance of Sabine Wren. We we're just talking about Sabine Rich. I have to be careful about what I'm saying here. <laughs> and Ezra Bridger and a comic that I think is prime for speculating on. An $80 average sale and a $350 sale for a CGC 9.8. I think this could very well be another one of those modern Hulk 180, 181 things because people have been focusing on Kane and the Last Padawan number six, which is the first full appearance of Sabine and Ezra. But this number one, they are very, very clearly in the book. It is undervalued. And with what's happening with Ahsoka and this series, I think this book has room to grow. When you have Ahsoka Tano played by Rosario Dawson, killing it the way she did, Grand Admiral Thrawn on the horizon, you got to think about the triad. You got to think about the group, the trinity, the trifecta. And I'm talking about Ahsoka, Sabine Wren, and Ezra freaking Bridger. Although a cameo, one panel, I think this book being undervalued under $400 right now could skyrocket, especially when you compare prices to number six. That's already above 650 for a 9.8. It's a 152% increase in copies sold this week for a cameo, but you have to keep in mind that when we had an Ahsoka cameo first time in the Marvel Star Wars universe, we've had other one panel cameos of Star Wars characters skyrocket, and I think this one is just about to take off. Well, with 152% increase in copies sold in seven days, clearly members are trying to secure what they can before the Star Wars universe expands more than it already has. At the list at number five, we have Lady Killer number one, some 1950s narrative 
goodness. $70 average sale with a $350 high sale for a CGC 9.8. This Dark Horse book is a fantastic read with a beautiful aesthetic. It looks so different from everything else that I've read. And I really did like the story. It's so dark and gritty and not expected at all. And the fact that we just found out that Blake Lively has been cast for the upcoming Netflix adaptation is causing a lot of interest. With a 700% increase in copies sold and a spec that was called by Key Collector, let's give credit where credit's due. I mean, back in 2020, just prior to COVID shutdown, there was rumors that this was going to be announced. Put on the spec deck. A lot of members got it for cheap. Well, we're here in 2021. Production is back on with casting made. How exciting. Also keep in mind that volume two continues the same amazing art style. But if you're looking for the one to spec on, pick up volume number one. Now, you know why you like the art so much? Do you know who the colorist is? Hmm. Laura Alred. Oh, uh, okay. Totally. Yep. Right? Absolutely. It's interesting to see her working without her husband, Mike, but it is so stark. What an amazing color style. It's just really solid colors, but it's so distinct. Absolutely. Some of our favorite creators in the game. Now let's take a look at another badass female protagonist. We have at number four, Conan. Issue number 23, the first appearance of Red Sonia. $300 average sales and a $1,500 high sale for a CGC 9.6. And I'm pretty sure I know the owner. Hey, Jeff, I hope you're happy with the price you got for that book. But this book is roundly considered a cameo for Red Sonia. You know what? She's in like 20 panels. She's kicking ass and taking names all over the place. This is so not a cameo. It's a first full appearance, even if number 24 is called The Song of Red Sonia. That's right. She appears for the first time on cover in issue 24. It's a lot more affordable and the narrative does lead with Conan and Red Sonia all throughout it. You really get introduced, but she says her name in issue 23. There are multiple panels and that is clearly a full appearance. And with the announcements this week that we have casting been done already for a Red Sonia film, I'm shocked. No one was specking on this book. So we've seen Hannah John came in as Ghost in the Ant-Man and Wasp movie, and she fought a little bit in that movie, but again, I don't think she was in there a whole lot. We have an announcement that she is going to be in the new Resident Evil movie, and I think we're going to get to see more of her chops. I'm not 100% sold on the casting for Red Sonya, but I'm going to hold my judgment until I actually see her in action because we know she's a fighter. With a 371% uptick in copies sold for this very respected book, this character is an amalgam of multiple characters that were found in the Robert E. Howard literature of Conan. And this character revitalized the entire run, giving us a very strong female protagonist that was able to really put Conan in his place. Knowing that we have Resident Evil coming very soon, welcome to Raccoon City, where they're going to be taking us to the Spencer Mansion. I'm excited to see Hannah take on the role of an incredibly powerful lead female protagonist. It's going to give me the confidence I need for her to take on this gorgeous redhead. Number three on the list, Mighty Avengers number one. And this might be time for that soundbite, Tom, because I don't think anyone was specking on this book. On this book that no one was specking on. Absolutely. $18 average sale and a $200 CGC 9.8 for the first appearance of Monica Rambeau as Spectrum. About six months ago, I was even talking to people before the whole WandaVision thing saying, hey, this is a book that you should think about. And it's like five bucks. So the fact that it spiked 1,250% on the announcement of Monica Rambeau being in the Marvel's movie, this book is moving and shaking. What moniker will Monica Rambeau take on in the MCU? I mean, we have her being Captain Marvel. We have her being in Ms. Marvel. Neither of those are likely going to happen. We got Kamala Khan coming. We even saw... Photon spec, which was really my vote for a long time, seeing the nickname on her mother's fighter pilot in the movie. But now members are looking at this other key, her appearance as Spectrum, as the one that could pop prior to the film, maybe during it as well. A 1,250% increase in copies sold for this Luke Cage-led team. I mean, come on, man. It's the first appearance of Blade as Spider Hero. How else are we going to get Blade into the MCU? Comic fam, slap that subscribe button, hit the like button. We've been here every week for the comic community for three years oh now. God. Can you believe it? <laughs> and at number two, we have a book that would make Fire Guy Ryan proud. I can't believe I started the fire. We have Green Lantern issue number 59, the first appearance of Guy Gardner making the list. 
Keep in mind that this is a great Silver Age key, but since they are very, very condition sensitive, you are gonna see prices all over the place. Now we're gonna report that it's an average sale of $785, but the high sale that we found was $700 for a CGC 8.0. This is interesting because the same book sold just a couple months ago for only $535. In the same grade and a 1500% uptick in copies sold in the last seven days, we have casting. We we have further synopsis of the upcoming Green Lantern HBO show, and we were crossing our fingers, crossing our toes that they weren't just going to give us a small story or something even remotely close to the Ryan Reynolds Green Lantern film. They're taking us all throughout the timeline, going to introduce multiple Green Lanterns to the world. Well, the information we have this week is that it starts in 1941 following Alan Scott before they introduce Guy Gardner. You know what? How Jordan and John Stewart are not far behind and the fact that they're actually going to use all of the Green Lanterns as well as some secret lanterns. I'm very excited for this. They're going to be creating new characters that will probably get incorporated into comics. I mean, the spec is real and the hype is at an all time high. I am very excited that Finn Whitrock has been announced as Guy Gardner for this series. Now, you may know him from the American Horror horror story series. I really liked him in the hotel sub series, but I think he's going to do an incredible guy gardener. And now we're at the list at number one, the number one trending book in the world right now. And who would have thought Jeff Lemire would come right back on this list courtesy of Robert Downey Jr.'s production company. We have Sweet Tooth number one after a trailer dropped and just rocked the internet. It's coming to Netflix. And I don't think anyone was anticipating this fantasy narrative to just be on the minds of so many collectors and the mainstream as much as it has been over these last seven days. Well, the anticipation Patient for this book has been around <laughs> since September of 2019. And really, the fact that it's now selling for $160 average sales with an $890 high sale for a CGC 9.8 with 35 bids, they drop the trailer. Everyone is excited again. The film looks gorgeous, man. The cinematography looks excellent. We have human animal hybrids and they are doing the comic book on screen with a soundtrack that is just so pleasant to hear. They're really going all out for the Netflix fam and the comic community. It looks beautiful. It looks soft. All of the CG, everything they're doing to meld these characters together just looks incredible. I don't think I was that excited until I saw the trailer and now I really, really can't wait to see this. And it's for that exact reason this uptick of 650% in seven days happened. People knew this was coming. Key Collector's been telling you that this yep. is coming. We've been hitting the mic multiple times telling you this was coming. But this was a dollar bin book. It literally was sold for a dollar at release. It yep. says a dollar on the comic. This right here could be a huge fantasy property and underappreciated regardless of how spec has taken us. I'm just very excited. Congratulations, Jeff Lemire. Now, people need to keep in mind that this was an introductory price DC Vertigo book, and it had a really low print run for the era, just over 18,000 copies of this book. And again, it was sold at $1 on the rack when it first came out, when the other books were 3 and $4 around it. There weren't a lot of people picking it up, and you can find these in cheap bins. The boy who is leading this narrative with deer-like features is going to be so memorable. I have high hopes for this man. And I want to know what the comic fam thinks in the comment section below. It will answer you to win a copy of Tankers issue number one, Dinosaur Time Travel Goodness, and as always. Geek responsibly. Nuff said. We got other videos for the comic fam. We made them for you and... Check out the podcast. Yeah, it's back. It's right there. And you're going to enjoy it. I got the guru on the mic and we're chatting some very expensive paper. Bye.